Now we have the second speaker again from Osnabrück University. This time we have Alexander Brodis here. He is the third year PhD student, right? And his talk is combining midpoint optimization and conventional end-to-end -end segment routing for traffic engineering around the same topic, I guess, similar topics. So we'll see. All right, thank you. Okay. Thanks for your introduction. Um, does this work? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, as you can guess from the title, the topic is rather similar to the one of my uh, colleague that you've heard before. So also dealing with traffic engineering and second routing. But um, so there will be some overlap, but I try to keep the overlap as uh, small as possible and focus on the um, different parts of our work. So uh, first of all, let's start with a quick real world motivation introduction on what uh, traffic engineering actually is or what we um, actually need, need traffic engineering for. So um, if you, for example, after the conference want to go uh, on a vacation for a week or so, just like me and my colleagues, you probably want to go um, from Daytona here, maybe to Miami to uh, visit the beach or uh, explore the Keys. And um, at least for us as non-locals, we have basically no idea how to get from Daytona to Miami. So the first approach basically is uh, yeah, to ask Google, uh, what is the best way? And um, then you probably get an answer like this, where Google just suggests the um, best road in its opinion. And if we transfer this to a little bit more of a theoretical uh, look, then this is a little bit simplified, but um, not really much else than um, typical shortest path routing. So you will just um, put in the information where you are and where you want to go, and then Google selects the best possible route based on a certain metric, like traveling distance or traveling time and so on. But the problem with this typical shortest path routing is that it chooses individual optimal paths. So it treats you like uh, you are the only one on the road um, and then suggests, okay, the best path would be the one indicated in blue here. However, the problem that we have here is uh, that we are not alone on the streets. Um, and if everyone asks Google how to go from Daytona to Miami and everyone gets this suggested path, then we probably get a traffic jam um, if everyone takes this road. So um, with traffic engineering, the idea is now to um, deviate from this typical short path in order to um, distribute the traffic a little bit more. So for example, take an alternative route like the one um, indicated here over Orlando, if it's really a better, shorter route, whatever, I don't know. Um, but the general idea of traffic engineering is to not always rely on simple shortest path because this might result in traffic jams but instead try to distribute the traffic a little bit more um, across the network. And this does not only work in real, uh, in real life, but also in the general networking environment. Um, and here we, or just like Daniel, um, I focus mostly on traffic engineering and ISP backbones. So as depicted uh, on the right here, we mostly have networks like the one of AT&T or in Germany, the Deutsche Telekom and so on that um, for real world motivation basically connect you to your content providers like Netflix or Twitch or whatever you are watching on the internet. The traffic has to go from these content providers to you and this mostly runs through these um, ISP backbone networks. And the idea for traffic engineering in these networks is again to distribute the traffic um, more efficiently through this network in order to realize various um, traffic engineering objectives. Um, as we've seen before, there are the objective of like green traffic engineering to reduce energy consumption in these networks, but there are also approaches like um, avoiding faulty network elements as depicted here. So if we have like a route failure or so, we might experience high load on certain links in our network. And then we can again use traffic engineering to deviate traffic away from these high uh, utilized links, um, for example, over the green path here to um, ensure operability and um, availability of our network. And what I am focusing on mostly in my research is the um, objective of um, reducing the link utilization in the network or the maximum link utilization. This basically does um, not mean nothing else than looking at the highest utilized link in the network and trying to keep this utilization as low as possible. The idea behind this is um, that if we have like a link that is utilized up to 90% or more, and we then have failures or traffic shifts or whatever that changes our network conditions, then we just have a little bit of room um, to, to deal with this before we run into overutilization. But if we manage to keep our network at like 50 to 60% utilization across all links, then we have a lot of uh, a lot more room to deal with um, certain events or, or unforeseen events. Um, 
And yeah, traffic engineering can be implemented with various technologies. Like one of the earliest ones was metric tuning. So just changing ISP metrics in the network. Then there's something like MPLS. And one of the newer uh, tools in the traffic engineering toolkit is segment routing. So we've already seen at, uh, in Daniel's talk what segment routing is, but the general or key idea of segment routing is to simply introduce a certain kind of interim destination to a packet so that we do not just route it via short path towards its destination, but we can deviate it with these interim destinations across our traffic engineered path. So in this example here, we basically add the label stack UOS to our packet and then do not route it via the short path, which would go directly at the bottom here but can create a traffic engineered path um, as indicated in red. Um, another kind of terminology that we need here that we uh, didn't really heard of in the first talk is the concept of a segment routing policy, which basically is nothing else than um, yeah, more or less a rule that we have to install on our routers that define what kind of labels we add um, to certain traffic flows. So in this example here, we would install on router A some kind of rule that says, okay, if we have uh, traffic coming in here at node A, that has to go to node S, then we um, put on this label stack URS to send it over the red traffic engineered path. Um, and generally, these uh, second routing policies are or has to have to be kept as low as possible. At least most operators prefer it. Um, there are multiple reasons, but um, I think the most understandable is to keep the network as, as clear and maintainable as possible because we do not want to configure like hundreds or thousands of these rules, but keep it like at a, at a handful or a, a low two digit number if possible. Um, and what we've also not heard before about segment routing is that there are actually two variations basically. We have the yeah, conventional end-to-end um, -end segment routing in which segment routing is used, yeah, as the name suggests, in an end-to-end in an -end fashion for its end-to-end -end panels for traffic demands. And um, uh, the, the other uh, segment routing variation is called midpoint optimization or IGP shortcut outroad announce depends a little bit on uh, what vendor you're at, um, which try to um, make second routing policies usable by multiple demands at once to bring down the number of policies. So I brought a small example here, basically the one from before, which if we use end-to-end -end segment routing, we basically have like a second routing panel that says, okay, this tunnel is only for traffic that comes in here at node A and goes to node S, which, um, means if we add like another node to our network and have traffic coming here from X going to S um, and it passes over node A, it does not get steered into this traffic engineer tunnel because it is yeah, just an end-to-end -end tunnel, so only for traffic that comes into our network at node A. Um, but with midpoint optimization, we basically, um, a little bit simplified here, uh, change these, this rule set and remove the, the it's called a source requirement here and only say, okay, all traffic that um, has to go to node S and passes over this node A here will be steered onto this traffic engineered tunnel. And so the, the blue traffic flow also follows this traffic engineered tunnel here. And as you can already guess, we have now basically deviated two traffic flows with just one traffic engineered tunnel in our network. Um, so this holds the potential to significantly reduce the number of policies that we need to install. Okay, so if we have two variations, the natural question that arises is uh, which is the better variation, basically. Um, and for this, we um, look at two like performance indicators. One is the maximum link utilization. So how good is the optimization quality, basically, that we can achieve and the number of policies. And basically, the closer we get to the origin of the graph, the better the, the approach is, basically. And um, with end-to-end -end segment routing, we achieve very good optimization quality because we have a per flow traffic control. So each traffic flow can be deviated or steered onto its individual traffic engineered path. <laughs> However, this also requires quite a lot of policies to configure in our network. Whereas with midpoint optimization, we can significantly reduce the number of policies, but we also lose some kind of, of traffic control and therefore the optimization quality or the maximum link utilization becomes a little bit worse. So what uh, the next question that arises now is if we can combine these approaches, um, can we basically leverage both their uh, individual advantages and circumvent their individual disadvantages? So if we combine them, can we get solutions with low policy numbers, but also the good uh, traffic engineering capabilities of end-to-end -end segment routing? And the general idea here is to use basically midpoint optimization policies wherever possible, uh, wherever it is possible to keep the numbers as low as possible. 
But if we notice that we need the um, individual traffic steering capabilities of end-to-end -end segment routing, and then we also have the option to install these policies into our network. And in our paper, we have shown that in theory, uh, that in theory, um, this can, uh, the, or the, the hybrid segment routing approach can result in better um, solutions. But the question is again, does it transfer into practice or is it just like a yeah, theoretical gimmick or theoretical uh, solution that we found here? <laughs> and um, for this, we developed an optimization algorithm. Again, similar to Daniel, it is based on linear programming. Um, the linear program is shown here, but uh, I will spare you or spare you with the details. Um, and just show you some general idea of what we are doing. So we feed in um, information about the network topology here, um, which contains like information about capacities, uh, IGP metrics, and so on. And then information about the traffic, like a traffic matrix that just says, okay, um, this amount of traffic has to go from node A to node B, and so on, um, which we feed into our algorithm. And then um, we get a segment routing configuration that says, okay, we need to configure these policies into our network. Um, yeah, for more details on this algorithm, I have to refer to our paper, but for now, I just want to show you some of our results that we managed to obtain with this algorithm. Um, yeah, the general question is, how does it perform compared to the other standard approaches, like the end-to-end -end approach and the midpoint optimization approach? And for this, we compared it to um, two state-of-the-art, also linear programming-based um, optimization algorithms, the 2TLE algorithm of my colleague, Tim Schur, um, which uses end-to-end -end segment routing and the SE2TLE algorithm that I published uh, last year at Infocom that uses solely midpoint optimization. And um, we also evaluated it on the repetitor data set that Daniel also used um, for his work. But here we just uh, took all the 209 instances in the repetitor uh, data set also containing larger ones like uh, I think this is uh, cogent communications and at this network, I've actually forgotten the name, but uh, as you can see, it's a rather large European network um, that we evaluated our algorithms on. Okay, so let's come to the first results. Here again, we look at the uh, maximum link utilization. So everything uh, at the green line here at the bottom, you see the op is an optimal result. So that cannot uh, be better in theory. And as you can see here, like end-to-end uh, -end segment routing, across the different sizes of topologies, um, basically always achieves um, the optimal result apart from just a few outliers here. And midpoint optimization, or only using midpoint optimization on the other hand, is also quite okay or quite good, but um, doesn't come close to end-to-end -end segment routing for um, every instance. And now in the middle, you always see our hybrid approach, the new approach, which you can see here is actually um, really able to perform on the same level as end-to-end -end segment routing, which was what we were hoping for. Um, and now the interesting question is how many policies do we actually need to implement these solutions? And um, I looked at that here. Um, for the smaller instances, uh, you probably do not see that much. Therefore, I also included a, a logarithmic scale here. But um, what you can see, especially here at the right side for the larger networks with, I think, uh, above 50 nodes in the networks is that end-to-end um, -end segment routing tends to use rather high policy numbers. So it goes into the hundreds or thousands, um, at least in the, in the outlier cases. Whereas midpoint optimization can significantly, can significantly reduce this number, um, as you can see here. And if you now look at the, the middle rows between uh, or, the, or at our hybrid approach, you can see that the policy numbers are actually substantially reduced compared to end to uh, compared to the end to end approach, while um, achieving basically the same optimization policy. However, if we now look at the detailed graphs at the top here, we see that actually our hybrid approach tends to use more segment routing policies than midpoint optimization or only using midpoint optimization, which is um, at first thought kind of counterintuitive because the hybrid algorithm also has the option to just choose only midpoint optimization. Um, so every solution that midpoint optimization can achieve should also be achievable by our hybrid approach, um, at least in theory. So we looked a little bit more into it. And um, the reason for this is that generally, if we um, achieve better maximum link utilizations or to achieve better maximum link utilizations, you need more policies. So basically, um, if we want to bring the maximum link utilization down, we need to deviate some traffic from high, highly utilized links and add 
other policies, so it's more or less quickly increasing. And as we've seen before, the, um, the maximum uh, the, yeah, the maximum leakage realizations that we achieve with our hybrid approach are actually better than those of the midpoint optimization algorithm. So we are kind of doing an unfair comparison here when comparing solutions with different maximum leakage realizations. And if we account for that and um, use a target value to only compare solutions with actual uh, similar maximum leakage realizations, then we actually see that with our hybrid approach, we can further reduce the um, policy numbers compared to this midpoint optimization approach. This is rather interesting because this shows that our hybrid approach is not just more or less the sum of its parts that just combines the advantages of both parts, but actually adds additional value because it further reduces the policy numbers even compared to so midpoint optimization. Okay, as a final slide, or the close to final slide, um, the problem, if you want, with our LP-based algorithm is that linear programs do not scale that well. Um, so for larger networks, the computation times tend to become quite large. So for this algorithm, it goes up to hours, or in the worst cases, uh, it scratches at the, at the day mark, basically, which is arguably okay if you want to do long-term configuration in your network, where you just change it like every week or so, then these computation times are acceptable. Um, but they are definitely not usable for fast strategic optimization or tactical traffic engineering in the case of failures or uh, traffic shifts. And uh, therefore, we also um, looked at a hybrid, uh, at a heuristic algorithm that uses the hybrid segment routing approach, um, which is an extension of a, a heuristic algorithm that we developed for midpoint optimization. And we were able to show that. Um, with this hybrid approach, we can also compute solutions in a subsecond fashion. So as you can see here, it's again for the repetitor data sets. Um, the, green, uh, the blue line marks the subsecond threshold or the, the one second time limit, and the red line marks a two minute time limit. Um, and we looked at how fast we can remove congestion from our network. So if we notice, okay, our network has a utilization over 100%, then we give it into our algorithm and see how fast it can compute a solution that brings the network utilization below this 100% threshold. <laughs> and here we've sh um, shown that the segment or the hybrid segment routing approach can do this in more or less subsecond fashion for most instances. Um, yeah, for even more results, I have to refer to our paper because my talk is nearing the end. Um, and as the takeaways, basically, what are the contribution and findings of our papers? So we first of all um, theoretically discussed or described and discussed this hybrid segment routing approach and also built the first um, algorithm, optimization algorithm that uses it. And then in an extensive evaluation, we basically showed that um, it performs as expected. It achieves maximum linkage to the solution qualities uh, comparable to end-to-end -to -end segment routing while um, also realizing these solutions with even fewer policies than midpoint optimization. And as we've seen just before, this approach is also usable for technical traffic engineering in subsequent fashion. And for future work, we basically just plan to look similar to Daniel at further real world requirements and also plan to do a little bit more of a more sophisticated technical traffic engineering analysis where we also want to look at the uh, shared with link group failures and so on. Okay, I think, yeah, that's the time limit. It works out perfectly. Thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, ask them now or reach out to me in the coffee break or via mail. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? So thank you very much. This was really interesting. Uh, I guess I had a question. There is this premise that the more policies, the longer the delay, I assume, and, and this is a negative. Um, did you run any experiments just to correlate that? Because you're saying, you know, if I have more policy, then oh, it's, it's an undesirable approach. But I'm assuming since you already decided to implement them, you're already slowing things down in terms of processing delay. So the question is, is there a linear relationship between the number of policies and the delay, or is it just that you implemented, you're adding in the delta there? That's a really good question. Um, I wish I would have an answer to that, but uh, so basically this is something that I'm also you know, working on or trying to get my hands on to get information on that, because we were also wondering if we have, especially for the technical traffic engineering case, if we have lots of policies to configure, 
in a rather short time frame to react to failures if there's a difference between like configuring yeah hundreds to thousands policies timing wise or just a couple of, of tens of policies when using the hybrid approach. However, it's rather hard to get your hands on this kind of information because um, you can't really measure or experiment in the live networks. And yeah, so I sadly cannot really answer your question here, but maybe in, in half a year or so, I, I can provide you with an answer. Absolutely. Thank you, Alex. Okay. If you have questions, you can come over there or I can do. Thanks for the presentation. Just one question. What do you lose with the heuristical algorithm compared to the other one, especially when you see the sort of router being humanoid flying into being well? Is there some sort of relation in that? These, so how much of solution quality I'm using, uh, I'm losing when I think there are some backups. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the timing. Uh, yeah, that's the, so basically here you can see the H2TLE algorithm is the, the linear program and exactly. the HSLS is the, uh, the, the heuristic. Um, so for the smaller instances, there's, yeah, of course, we, we use some optimization quality, sure. but it's arguably not that relevant. And here you can see that on the larger, arguably more interesting int instances, we lose a bit of optimization quality, but we are in the like 5% range. So here's 90% utilization, 95%. Um, so for, for practical usability, it's perfectly fine, I would argue. Okay. Any other question? I actually had the question, but you partially uh, answered, like, uh, what was, how long it was going to, it is taking the algorithm that you had, like you said, it's long, long, that's why you have heuristic, but this heuristic is not a distributed algorithm, right? Yeah. Uh, excuse me? It's not a distributed algorithm, right? It's no, no, it's, it's, it's uh, not a distributed algorithm. Yeah. The distributed would be also interesting to look like that. Yeah, could definitely be interesting to look at, but uh, then you will sacrifice, of course, some. Yeah. Any others? Thank you for your presentation. I have a question about SR. Uh, I study some papers in this field. They can make um, makes a loop in network. What is your idea about decreasing loops with uh, this hybrid algorithm uh, for uh, networking? You you mean routing loops? So basically, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, um, they are with the second routing implementation that we are using. Basically, not possible to configure, or at least not um, uh, infinite loops. Basically. I've actually written another paper published at, at the end two years ago uh, on the fact that with segment routing, you can configure uh, loops in your network that are not infinite, so they are not trapping your packet, but uh, they just route it in a, a loop or flight in German. Um, and that sometimes these loops can actually be beneficial for uh, traffic engineering purposes. Yeah. Sounds like quite counterintuitive, okay. but uh, I think going into detail here would uh, be a little bit too time consuming, so I can talk to you in the coffee break or uh, refer you to our paper from LCN two years ago. Thank but you. For, for your question, loops are generally not, or the, the infinite loops are not a problem um, in this or with our algorithm. Thank you, because we know the com it's very deep, um, complex to implement. And for this aspect, I would like to know more about this problem for SR. Thank you so much. Yeah, we can thank talk you. about that in the conference. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, so that will close the questions for your paper. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.